Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. Tonight we have SCP 90210. I mean, <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah, SCP 902. Um, <clears throat> so 902 is, I, I believe it was posted on the, uh, on the SCP Foundation by Admin Bright. They were the first person in the history, like uh, in the history log, to um, do anything with this entry. So I'm, I'm. That's my best guess. And unfortunately, there's no. I, I couldn't really find anything else uh, that gave me a clear cut as to who created this story, this entry. But anyway, um, so you can check out SCP-902 on the SCP Foundation web a website, and I'll just dive into the rundown. Uh, SCP-902. What? Oh, I mean, sorry. <clears throat> SCP-902 is to be kept in Arctic Base Theta-12, with 50 security staff and no research to be done at all. Only 105 is to, be, is to know the existence at any given time. In the event of containment breach, an on-site nuclear bomb is to be detonated. 902 is, uh, <clears throat> SCP-902 appears to be an old ammo box made of lead. There appears to be nothing within the box when opened. However, a ticking sound can be heard when either closed or opened, coming from within the box. Uh, like a countdown. SCP-902 appears to be, or at least have the same capabilities of such, um, and infects any and all individuals who are aware of... Fuck. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, that could be a It wants problem. to be destroyed. There is no object. There is an object. It has to be destroyed. When the countdown stops, we are doing great work. We have to be stopped. In. Uh, that's that's about the gist of the information that we get for this entry. Um, so everyone tolerates the grammar positions. Do we got ones, guys? I have a potential it story. We got one. Sorry. <laughs> I think I have one too. Ooh, okay, cool. Uh, then I guess we'll just. I I have nothing, guys. So I'll just let, I'll just I'll I'll toss this. I'll I'll like for I'll just um move the spotlight over to you guys. <laughs> Um and Mikey, you're up. <laughs> so uh, it's story. Uh, oh. So uh, cultist, and, you're up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now an it story with Mikey. The E stands for evil. Take it away. It is imperative that only a limited number of senior staff know of the existence of SCP-902. It measures 30 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 19 centimeters. It appears to be an ammunition box of a type used roughly 30 years ago, despite this item having been in the Foundation custody for roughly 60 years. It has to be destroyed when the countdown stops. Finn. I don't know if that caught it. <laughs> Not really. Your it sort of basically <laughs> summarizes the entirety of the entry, yeah. though. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, and honestly, like, it, it, it's not even like a silly it story thing. Like, where we're like, we like, it's like, oh, what's what's it trying to say? No, it tells you in that it story <laughs> what this yeah, is. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, then, is that is that it for your grammar position? Uh, yep. All right, gamer, just uh, <clears throat> tilt this spotlight. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> uh, hi. Uh, I don't normally do this. I'm a little shy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're giving, they're giving me a card. makes it super awkward. <laughs> they, oh, they're giving me a card here. Get the hell off the stage. <laughs> like a giant hook. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right. The composition of the item inside SCP-902 is unknown. I feel like it should be items, not item, because it's unknown what's in it, apparently. So how maybe, would they know it's a singular item? Yeah, like maybe item or items. <laughs> Like, That's what I said. Oh, did you? I thought you said. I thought you. Were just, like, I thought you were just adding plural. Just so. Okay, sorry. Yes. Yeah, plural items. That's what you just said too. Yeah, no, I, I know, but I, I, I went like you went with just like add an S so that it says items rather than item or items. Oh, either or. Yeah, I yeah. see. Uh, hmm. 
That too. That's more better. Gooder. I know English good. <laughs> yes. Hey, that, that's really all I got, honestly. Okay. That's that's fair. Um, now that I think about it, there's something in my actual thoughts that might be grammar acquisition, but it also kind of falls more in line with like SCP procedures that are Why not. Why don't you lead with it then? Because you're up <sighs> next. Let me, let me just find something. All right. So we're into actual thoughts uh, and nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, where the fuck is it? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, so this is, yeah, this, uh, what's funny enough is this is my, like, last note in my actual thoughts, <laughs> but I'm starting at the top. So, <clears throat> anyone who becomes aware of SCP-902, whether through personal interaction or by reading this report, <laughs> becomes convinced that whenever whatever is in the box is horribly dangerous and needs to be destroyed as soon as it finishes counting down and not before. Guys... Why isn't half of the words in this entry not redacted? Um, yeah. She, I, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I know this is one of those the oldest one of the older entries. Like I think this actually was first like posted on the SCP entry at like 2011. Mm-hmm. Um but I feel maybe some retrofitting of some more modern clearance formatting like we've seen in more recent entries that we've even done covered on the show, um, might give a better, a bit more credence as to the imperative nature of not knowing about this object, uh, but needing to, you know, file a report. Like maybe have like those like click to, to like expand sort of like doc documents and stuff like that. Because um, mm-hmm. yeah, like this is, <laughs> this is a fucking info hazard as a report. <laughs> Like you don't even need the box; you just need this report, and that's that in itself is apparently a vector. Yeah, pretty much. Like this entry is an SCP in itself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and we're going, you know, three layers deep into the uh, into the memetic virus here. Mm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just damn. Um. And actually, that I guess kind of ties into my next my 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 first no actual thought about this creature or about this, this object. Um, so the site is to be staffed by a team of 50 security personnel. At this time, no research is to be done on SCP-902. And then a little bit later, in the event of a security breach from inside Arctic base Theta-12, the on-site hydrogen bomb is to be detonated remotely. SCP-902 must be guarded at all times against premature destruction. So like, why have that many potential casualties in the event of a breach? Why not have like automated sensors and protocols and leave the thing locked away in a vault in the Arctic? <laughs> then I think it means like if there's a breach and whatever the fuck gets past all the security guards, their backup is to bomb the entire thing. I, I get that, but like from what it is, like you could do that with automation. You don't need like, or have it from like a remote site. And like, if any, so my idea is like, have this fully automated with sensors and protocols and some of that. And so like when those sensors get tripped by the, by a breach, um, it's sent to a mess, like uh, basically like they've set this all up and then they memory wipe anybody who was involved with uh, amnestics. Um, well, you know, standard procedure of the foundations, amnes- like amnesiacs uh, or amnes brain, brain fuckling juice. <laughs> Um, and then they neuralize have, like, them. Yeah, exactly, neuralize them. Yes, thank you. And then have like protocols in in place so that when like an SCP, like when a, a security breach happens or like uh, a sensor gets tripped, there is a protocol to follow. It's like, oh shit, we don't know anything about this, but we're told to like uh, hit the button. All right, well, bureaucracy be damned. <laughs> and then that way, like, like no one knows about what's in the vault. Therefore, they just they just following procedure to like hit a button and detonate the bomb. Um, it just seems like. The the only reason I can see that the foundation going through the seemingly flawed lengths to safeguard this artifact is because that the artifact itself has already corrupted um, the foundation into performing this kind of setup. Um, so yeah, it's already right. too late. Like it's already too late. <laughs> like you're it's... you're one hundred percent right there because yeah. like if they have it set up where you can just blow it up, it's like why are they keeping it alive? "Quote unquote." It's exactly like, as you said because everyone is already like indoctrinated by this thing that they can't kill it until it stops beeping. Yeah, and I mean, from from a from a writing standpoint, that is really the that kind of feels like the point of this 
this entry is that it is it is showing the nature of a mimetic virus and how it like yeah no we've got this contained we've got this completely contained as they just like start like going glassy eyed because they've already been infected <laughs> like they're already being whispered and told that uh, by the virus it's or by the by the uh by the presence of, of of the artifact that it's already everything's fine here now how how are you <laughs> exactly yeah it, it's very much a uh like no, we got this under control. Well, who who told you he had this control? Oh, the, the artifact did. Wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I this is the, and this is. I think that's actually like the key core concept of this entry is that like it is a an ent- it is a creature an entity that is basically in control s- subtly, like without the foundation knowing about it or realizing it. Um, and I really like that idea uh, because it it does kind of show the nature of a mimetic virus or an info hazard um in this entry um and then we're gonna I'm, i want to talk about this this ammo box image um so yeah it appears to be an ammo box on of a type used roughly 30 years ago despite this item having been in the foundation custody for roughly 60 years that's kind of all right it's it's weird eldritch things uh or it's brain fuckled everybody into thinking that um and then regarding the image itself that we get in this entry, I don't, I don't think to me, that doesn't look like an ammo box. <laughs> um, oh, you're thinking of like a modern day green I, military I did, ammo box. Yeah. I did Google like antique ammo boxes and stuff like that. And like, I, I can kind of see it. Like maybe that's like, maybe it is an ammo box, but to me, it's more just like a chat, like an ornate ancient chest. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, further, uh, if you like, look at the image document, like it says that it's from, um, uh, Dude, I forgot the. I already forgot the name of the the country that uh, it says on it. Uh, Sarmankand, I think is Sarah. Uh, hang on. Yeah. Um. It's it's it says that uh, like the image itself. If you like pull it out, like pull it onto your desktop. Um. It says like an old box from Samarkand. Uh. Or Samarkand. Oh, yeah. The title from, is it. from is Uzbekistan. It? So, and and that's kind of that kind of um checks out for me because like the the patterns on the on the uh on the box itself kind of scream to me like middle eastern or like eastern european like turkey and like like that kind of like that neck of the woods in the world uh in terms of like the designs and stuff like that on the box um it's just to me it was kind of weird that this ammo box would have these that much that kind of detail on it but i'm also a dude from canada <laughs> um who doesn't know a whole who's not fully like world weary and cultural so like maybe maybe back then they they did do this kind of like ornateness to their ammo boxes i don't know um the, yeah, point, I was I know. Trying, the point i was just trying to get at is like it, it seems kind of weird that it's an ammo box but i i mean that's i just maybe i'm just not fluent enough in the art of war <laughs> literally it, it does kind of seem more like it's a footlocker yeah like you can go there and buy shoes if you want. You are an info hazard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, no, I, I didn't do that properly. I didn't do that properly. You're an info hazard. Oh, ow, that hurts. <laughs> go. I'm gonna go lay down and die now. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool is his answer. Love you, fam. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. All right. So, um, do you guys have anything else? To, do you have anything to say about the ammo box and the image before I move on to my next bit? No, nah, I basically agree with you. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know enough about ammo boxes of that age to know whether or not that's accurate, though it seems like it's a footlocker to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I have is, uh, since you brought up age, is does this ammo box always look like it's 30 years old? So right now it would actually look like an ammo box from 1991. Okay. Oh. I feel like it would have been mentioned if it's yeah. been changing its form. Although that would be a really cool thing to add to further expand on this entry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that is that while there is no discernible like object within the box, the box itself does appear to um subjectively change its appearance in terms of its uh like based on based on um uh based on how long like time keeps going. Like basically the time keeps flowing on it. Also I gotta say, it looks way older than what it's claiming to be. That's what I was saying. Yeah, like it, it's, it feels like it's an ancient like chest of from like the Middle East <laughs> to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like medieval times kind of situation chest. Yeah, it's like because it, basing this off of the year of this report being the year two thousand, just because I'm picking that as a number. 
Yeah. Um, it would be freaking. What was it? Sixty. It's a thirty-year-old box that they have had for sixty years. At that point. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this okay. this was posted in twenty eleven. So like, if we go by that, um, so thirty years from twenty eleven would have been as one ninety nine nine in the eighties, like or early eighties. Yeah. And then it would be like fifties apparently when when the foundation picked it up. So yeah, but they got a nineteen eighties ammo box then. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those are the traditional green metal. Now, that that's that's for that's like North American stuff and even Europe, but like maybe they do it differently in the Middle East. I don't know. Like if any of our listeners know. are from the Middle East and or like are a little bit more in like uh more um in the know on like that kind of like uh, on, on as to the design of SCP nine oh two, like you can check out the image on their website and stuff of like that, uh, and let us know like how wrong we are or if if this is if this is kind of checking out. Um, because yeah, like I, I totally agree. This this feels like this, this object. This this chest looks a lot older. It looks much more ancient than yeah. like '80s. <laughs> I'm pretty sure by the '80s and everything, like most countries in the world that had like weapons and all that shit, they all basically use the same sort of thing. Yeah, like they had like universal or like not universal, but like basically there was a. It, it's a reason why it's called, like basically like a, a surplus of mandated like tech for things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everyone copies each other too, so yeah. And uh, uh, there's one more thought about the oh. picture, <laughs> which is: what if it looks like an ammo box, but the picture is what it actually looks like? Oh, oh. fuck! Shit! That again? That's a really cool thing. And like, that's yeah. That that's part of the again the the mimetic virus is that like uh, because cameras are supposed to be an objective observer like you're not they're not supposed to have an opinion or they're not supposed to have like be subjective uh it's supposed to show the truth so like the people who are writing this this report are calling it an ammo box but the photo is actually revealing its true uh appearance Mm -hmm. no i like that i do too Uh, i kind of wish though now that now that like i kind of like again Furthering on my idea of like this could be retrofitted like as a format and stuff like that, I kind of wish that like when you first open the page, um, it's the ammo box here, but then it has some kind of a triggering mechanism that when you like scroll down and and like assumes you're going to be reading through the report and then you go back up and it, it swapped images to an ammo box, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, or just the... make it a GIF on a yeah. very long timer. Yeah, exactly. So it just um, cycles like... between the two like once a minute. Or something like yeah, that or like i know that there are like uh because I, I know that uh there's certain gifts that can be triggered in um uh in web comics because there's a, a spooky cur- south korean horror comic that i read once that were like you're reading through it you're reading through it and then there's a a gif um that like when you scroll through oh, scroll past it it becomes an animated panel <laughs> Oh really? Of like, yeah, because it's like it's an image. I'm sure people who who listen to us um, have heard about it, or like who who or no, may know what I'm talking about. But it's basically this like person walking down a street in, at night, and this like they see this weird person behind uh, in front of them that's like acting weird, and they don't see their face or anything like that. And so they they start walking up to them and say, "Oh, are you okay? Are you okay?" And then like it, it you scroll to that spot to the triggering part where the gift goes, the gift takes place. And suddenly it, it shows like uh, the back of the person's head and then their like neck completely twists around so that you see this creepy corpse face. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, it was, so, it's so good. Like, it's so creepy. Like, I remember like freaking out the first time I saw it. But yeah, it's that kind of like um, weird, like th- that browser based uh, like jump scare kind of thing that like I feel like you could have with this um, or like you work ar- work again with like that kind of technique to yeah change the image because as soon as you become aware of this report suddenly you think it's an ammo box so yeah no i that is that is a really good idea <laughs> and, <laughs> and yes that mikey that is perfect yeah because every yeah no it's totally an ammo box it's not it's not i mean what do I, what was i talking about earlier it's not a chest no <laughs> must have read it wrong yeah oh and when it gets to that part um when it cycles the image uh set it up so it actually cycles the descriptor of it like the words oh. <laughs> like the words originally said, it's like an ornate chest that looks like it's from the uh, the Middle Eastern area in this sort of year. And then you go back, it's like, oh, it's an ammo box around the 80s. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could have swore it said something different. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just totally, again, like just work off that paranoia and like that, like, that, like, totally, like, fuck with people that way. Mm hmm. 
oh god, it would get Candle Cove all over again. It's like, no, you were watching Static the whole time. Spoilers. Oh, yeah, spoilers <laughs> are like one of the most famous creepypastas that was never a creepypasta to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, damn it, that was that's really good, my, huh, Mikey. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to move on to my next thing. Uh, so SCP-902 is made of lead. The composition of the item, or items, I guess we want to correct that, uh, yeah. inside SCP-902 is unknown. SCP-902 emits what has been described as a ticking sound, and anyone who hears this sound becomes convinced that the item is counting down. When opened, the box appears empty. However, the ticking remains. The object continues counting down. All right. So some some Cthulhu made it better. Cthulhu might make it better. Uh, sort of segment of brainstorming. Um, and and maybe not just Cthulhu, but like just like some ideas for for like expanding this into like a scenario or like even a story kind of thing. Um, I think this that the artifact may not simply be a mechanical object. Um, that's within it, like counting down. I wonder if like it could be. You could even use this as like it's some sort of organism that's just out of phase with reality. Like hence being invisible. Um. Perhaps it's just out of our spectrum, um, or even a strange form of bacteria that lets out an auditory presence, hence the ticking. So, I, I, like, I'm kind of reminded, like, it's less ticking. I'm, I'm thinking of like tickers from uh, from Gears of War Two. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, for for like a game, the predator is kind of like clicking noisy, man. Yeah, exactly. It's just like the that creepy clicking sound that uh, that certain aliens and stuff get give off, uh, or even like insects, like cicadas. Like you could like kind of make that it like kind of treat it like that kind of thing um for a game or even a story i could i could see using uh the shan or the insects from shigai from the cthulhu mythos um since they're these creepy alien bug creatures that are slightly out of phase because they're kind of like part organic part energy based um and they get into people's heads and take control and that's often with through like very subtle but like aggressive means of brainwashing um Perhaps the container itself is housing a hive of these critters, and whenever it is opened, someone get uh, s- some of them get out and infect the closest individuals, um, and then those ones infect the next individuals that come into contact, and vice versa. And that's how the foundation's been infected. Uh, so basically, just like creepy invisible clicking brain worms <laughs> is uh, my kind of go to here. Um, they they might even be energy based, hence why the case itself is made of or is keeping them contained because it's like made of lead, sort of like how like radiation can't penetrate lead very well, so maybe like energy based creatures can't uh, escape. Um, so like they populate in the case and then wait for somebody to open the uh, uh, the, uh, the release of it uh, allows for some of them to, to come out and slowly start taking control. And then even given the mimetic nature, maybe. Maybe they don't even need to leave their case. Maybe they're just a cognivore of sorts. And they're just like this psychic bacteria that's inside the case that just is sending out psychic waves whenever this thing opens to uh to take uh, to persuade people. And like that's where you get the uh the mimetic virus angle of it, is that it's basically just a psychic attack. Um and they're just like they the clicking is just kind of like an auditory presence of the bacteria. Or uh, the ticking is the wave. Yeah that it's emitting so oh so maybe um, it's like creating like an auditory uh signal um from like bouncing off the walls of the of the case yeah so almost almost like a lure like to get somebody to open up the case sort of thing Mm -hmm. um so yeah this could uh, all around like this could make for a good like who can you trust sort of conspiratorial like storyline like i i kind of wouldn't mind seeing an scp tale um, of like somebody working at Arctic Base Theta, like maybe even an inspector is coming in to, uh, to see why funds are being funneled into this waste of space sort of like asset. Yeah, really. Like, like, and then like basically have like the yeah, basically have the uh, the outside uh, faction come in to and and find like everybody acting kind of weird and stuff like and indoctrinated in a way, kind of like um, again uh, because I've been playing it recently, the Mass Effect Three DLC for uh, for Leviathan. Um, you go to a, an asteroid base or an asteroid mining company and everyone's acting really fucked up and weird. Um, like they're all like very um, standoffish and like nonsensical in, ca- in some cases uh, because of the, uh, the influence of that's, that's affecting them. Except for there's one guy that works there who's deaf. So he can't be um, oh, fucked with. 
Yeah. And he's the guy who called in the extra help. He's like, I don't understand why everyone's acting really weird. I'm normal. Yeah, he's the he's the uh, Zadoz, um, the homeless guy from from Innsmouth, uh, who who tells the investigator um, about like the the deep ones and the Shoggoth and the sewer and stuff like that. Um, because he's the only one that's not been in, not been like corrupted by the uh, by the Innsmouth look. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely want to see kind of a storyline like pick up where like it just pulls like that kind of like you somebody walking going into this scenario into this 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 situation not tainted and like dealing with the the the, the corruption that's happening um on a on a subtle kind of bend or like it starts off subtle and then it gets more and more obvious the more he kind of looks they the more they look into it yeah. um hell i'd even love to see uh some stories in the vein of like personnel briefings and psychological horror uh working at this base like i, I think that's kind of more like basically more or less what i just said or what we've just said where and uh or or even like the idea of like what happens at the end of the timer event like maybe previously <laughs> infected individuals uh who heard the clicking and like then like were shipped out because they've like basically cycled through their shifts and stuff at at at, at this base um they they never truly recovered from being infected by the clicking um so as it's drawing close to basically to like to the end game point and like the clicking like just Tons of these like infected agents from SCP Foundation have just trekked out to this site illegally and are storming the site as part of some like unknowable plan th- that this thing has. Sort of like er- the Area 51 event from like a year ago, except maybe less weeps <laughs> and less Naruto yeah. running. Mm-hmm. It'll be <laughs> um, at least one guy that Naruto runs though, just for the hell of it. Yeah, of course. No, no, no. The Naru- oh god, guys, Area 51 was just this thing in Area 51. <laughs> Yeah, that was just this happening. Yeah, <laughs> in real life, the Naruto run was really just the mimetic virus. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, um, sort sort of an also like to kind of be more serious. It's sort of like an assault on Precinct Thirteen sort of deal. Like the people within the the base are trying to like keep these people out, and then they real they start they start realizing as the story goes on, they're trying to get in because they're just as infected as the individuals inside, um, and like they just want in. Because they want to be there when the when the when the uh, when the end of the uh, the counting happens. Um, then again, that's also just that that's basically just kind of like Pontypool as well. Um, it's a novel and a and a film that has very similar like mimetic virus sort of themes of like basically there's something in the in like spoken word or, or English that infects like everybody and turns them into like basically like uh, turns them into into zombies for lack of a better word. I knew it. I hate the English language. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's worse is that it, it starts uh, like uh, at. I mean, okay. spoilers for Pontypool. Go see uh, Pontypool if you haven't seen it. But at the end of the movie, I'm going to spoil it for my my hosts here. <laughs> um, it jumps language at the end, so like it. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it infects English, but then moves on to like French. <laughs> um, but. Again, again, it's just though. Again, working with those kind of themes of mimetic viruses and info hazards, and like your brain getting screwed up because of a a psychic uh, infection, basically. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of want to see like like maybe just have a story where like we find out why it's what what it was counting down to. Like maybe it's some kind of like supernatural or alien bomb that the foundation found, and they they had no idea what it actually is. So like it's a oh, countdown. Shit. It's basically just some like weird, creepy like uh, device that from a, from a, from a species that we've never in, that we we can't even conceive of properly. Um, sort of like an eldritch enti- like an eldritch bomb. Um, so like we have an a bomb basically set up on the base for when this thing goes off, but it in itself is it is is a bomb of of some kind of like WMD, like it's a weapon of mass destruction on like a psychic scale. Yeah, based on what you just said, it'd be like it's the counting down is it actually charging up yeah and when it gets to full power it's good to go then any strike that hits it like when it gets hit with enough like every hit that it's taking it's like basically absorbing yeah so when it gets hit by the nuke it absorbs that and amplifies it and like blows up the world <laughs> or or it doesn't blow up the world but basically just like um it, we we mass effect end it and just have like the uh no. it, it, indoctr- it just it just indoctrinates the entire world on like a massive scale <laughs> like mm-hmm. it, the bomb goes off to det- destroy it but it's fully charged at that point and so then there's just this wave of indoctrination across the world and then the aliens start coming in to like take over earth 
because we're all husks now. Damn it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's basically my my thoughts on this one. Um, like a lot of a lot of fodder to be had here for for something that has such little there. <laughs> yeah, like. I can see the entire entry on my screen without scrolling. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and maybe that's also like that. That'll be the difficult part with the uh, the changing the image is that you have to make this a little bit longer so that you can scroll away from the image. So that when you go back up, oh, it's an ammo box. It's yeah, always been an ammo box. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Mikey, I guess you're up. Yeah. Uh, so my first of the actual thoughts we haven't touched on yet is, does it have a secret compartment? Why? Oh, I see what you mean. That's like, why they don't see what's in it? Yeah. Yeah. And and maybe part of its like presence is like, no, no do not look behind the man. Do not look at the man behind the, behind the curtain. <laughs> mm. <laughs> do not look for the, uh, the, the... It's right there in plain day, but like... No, they, there's like a pr- psychic projection on a uh, hit on them that's just like no there's nothing it's just an empty box mm-hmm. well, i think what mike is getting at there's literally a trap door you can open up and you see the device in it okay yeah there, there's also that yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's a more mundane route i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> little do we know this is actually one of houdini's finest works <laughs> uh, yeah so that, that that was just a thought that came to me because a lot of boxes do have hidden compartments. Yeah. The next few questions I have are um, why hasn't more testing been done? Like yeah, you, I gotta know you, that too. You, usually SCPs do a lot more testing on things to figure out how it ticks. Uh, I, I mean, my my explanation for that, um, like, and it's it's the one I said earlier is just like the the thing doesn't want to be studied; yeah. it wants just to keep counting down. Uh, so it's it's already infected everybody. However, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Like, so the the SCP Foundation really should be kind of like questioning that, <laughs> like, why aren't we doing any tests on this thing? Yeah, like I get it. it. It's ticking down because it's it takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I love doing like unnecessarily uh, long pauses after a joke and be like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry." So SCP nine five thirty two, otherwise known as Gamer in Yellow. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Extreme Keter or like uh whatever the the worst like the high like the Doomsday class of info hazard. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty accurate. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have here a couple of um, simple tests that could could have been done. Like if you put something in the box, does it disappear? Ooh. Oh yeah. That then you know that you have a disassembler swarm, like a nanobite <laughs> disassembler swarm, just like inside that just disassembles everything down to its atoms. <laughs> <laughs> or like, did they even just take like even one of those like little toy grabby claws and just put it in there and see if they can grab anything out of it because it could just be like a cloaking field over top of it and yeah, there's true. actually shit in there although let's be fair it's the scp foundation it's the, it's probably they just got a d-class just put their hand in <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I, I kind of like i kind of wish like you know they put a camera inside of it like just like put like a gopro sort of like device inside just to like monitor the inside when they close the door the box like because they do mention it's like whether it's closed or open like and like it, it, it makes that clicking sound and like people have like tried to open it to see if they can or like and shut it to see if they can like see if something like appears um but nothing so yeah why not just put like a camera inside that has like a a night vision uh, setting to it i mean it does say i, I don't know specifically where but it says at this point oh wait, it, at this time, no research is to be done on SCP-902. That's why there's been no research. But yeah. why? No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is it because they're everyone's immediately indoctrinated, and this thing is telling everyone not to fuck with it? Yeah, because it wants to just keep counting down until its uh, its its purpose is complete. That's that, that honestly, that's my 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 head cannon for this is yeah. that the SCP Foundation is already infected by this thing, uh, and. There's nothing they can do about it because everybody, everybody in through the bureaucracy is infected. Okay. Um, now, the other thing that, that I have here, um, they're in the Arctic base. Yep. So, so the question becomes: 
does cold temperatures slow down the ticking? See, we haven't, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> It'd be yeah. interesting. It's like previously was uh, this the object was found at uh, at, um, at uh, uh, or was uh, was was sent to ob- um, uh, equ- equilateral base or equatorial base uh, gamma six, um, where the temperature uh, and and the counting appeared to be moving faster. But when moved to uh, theta twelve, the uh, it became more steady and slow. Like that would be an interesting thing to like, like again to give more details. Um, yeah. And like not like it, it's not like we it's not like ruining the entry. It's just basically like showing that like yes, cold temperatures are affecting the counting. It appears so. It is kind of fo- still following like physics, but it's still really fucked up and weird. <laughs> mm. I think the weirdest part about this this entire entry is like pretty much. I don't know about you guys, but when I read SCPs. I'm expecting and wanting the uh, them to be doing research on this and having past accounts and all this stuff. Yeah. But like, because there isn't any of it, it almost feels incomplete. Yeah. I'm, I know it's it's almost written like it's meant to be like that due to our head cannon that everyone's infected and it's telling them not to fuck with it. But somewhere down the line of people reading about this, they question it, right? Yeah, I I would like to see. I think I think to add on to that, I would like to see um, maybe some like uh, appendix or appendices um, or, or like some addendums that show like again personnel briefings from from staff within the base. Um, like maybe even have like those like kind of like click and then like they expand and you get like an interview with some people before they're like given amnestics as to like their time there. Um, or even like just have like a bunch of those like addendums, and then whenever you click them, there's just nothing there. It's just like everything's fine. Just like it's just like you going down. It's like everything's fine. We're doing good work. We need to be stopped. Not now though. But <laughs> just like each one, like it's like yeah. It's, I think that would be a really interesting. Like it would, it would, it would maintain the the theme and the core that's happening here is that this thing is is in control basically. But it would still it would make it seem a lot more. It, it would it would also um kind of just kind of hammer home that by like oh the foundation's using the like still the, the the foundation entry still has its addendums and its reports and stuff like that but as soon as you click those it's like there's just nothing really there except for these creepy messages that that the thing is leaving <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like the addendum is titled something like um like uh reasons to um like the the title is basically saying that this addendum is about uh, as to as to this addendum's about why they're not um, researching it, and then you click on it, it's like everything's fine here. Yeah, and it is <laughs> something. So it just seems like there was an addendum, and at some point, the guy like went back and edited it. Edited it. Edited. 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 How do you say edited? It? <laughs> I'm having edited, a hard time. Edited. Here. Edited it. Just, yeah. There we go. I was saying yeah. as one word as wrong. But yeah, someone <laughs> went back and uh, changed that. I'll just do that. <laughs> to, um, yeah, just, just something to show that it has. Because like the whole thing with it having influence over other people is just us assuming things. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was something there. I another idea I have for that uh, again to expand on that kind of idea. Um, have like a report on like the staff, like the status of all the staff and like, like for, that this thing is like that, that have been have gone through theta base. So like, uh, like you just have like a bunch of them that are just like, um, uh, they've, they've taken it. Like just have like this list of people, their, their time at the, at the base and what happened to them afterward. And like status, dead status, dead status, dead status, <laughs> suicide status, dead status, killed status. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> Her, uh, and then like, just and then like go into like a, like a creepy little blurb of like where they were when they died or like what they were doing like they were found breaking into into uh, an SCP foundation facility or something like that and just like you re- start realizing it's like holy shit all these previous like staff members at Theta Twelve have have been control taken control of to do some kind of weird bidding or they've or they've uh, they've left the base and and like committed suicide or something as a result of like their usefulness to this entity being over so they just like are ended yeah, but unfortunately that doesn't really the whole mo of this thing is shit's gonna go down eventually but it hasn't gone down now and i'm and things need to be on the dl until that happens 
yeah so Jordan, that's because true. d-day hasn't happened that's why I, there's not much here to say yeah that's that's one of the reasons why i was kind of like pushing for like i wouldn't mind seeing some tales of scp like basically like the stories that people write about scp entries <laughs> Uh, and just having like basically somebody write a story about the end game here mm-hmm. for SCP nine hundred two. Why not? Honestly, that should be the title of the SCP story. It's just SCP nine hundred two, and then in, in commas one zero. <laughs> just that's how long it took for it to happen. Yeah, <laughs> like it was the ninety thousand. What, what number is that? Nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, the ninety the year nine thousand. Oh, that, that's, 9, the, that, that's how many SCPs they found. Up until that point, because they're counting up, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I see what you mean. Like, have 90210, like, entry be basically this thing, but, like, an updated version. Yeah, in the year, in the 2080s or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, the 2090s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm done with that. Again, I'm just adding to my list of Shadowrun games to run for uh, in, the SC, in, in our weird creepypasta SCP, like, future, <laughs> or cyberpunk future. But, uh... Yeah. What were we talking about? <laughs> what were we talking about? Everything's fine. I have no idea. <laughs> I, th- I think Mikey was finishing up his actual thoughts, or do you still have, do you have more to, to say there? Uh, yeah, my, my actual thoughts are done now. Okay. As always, we've, we've, <laughs> we've kind of usurped <laughs> your, your comments, and then you've just kind of like shied down into the shadows again. <laughs> oh, look, I say this every time it happens. It's not that we're, we're trying to just talk over you. You bring up something... If, Le- like legitimately interesting, like actually yeah. really interesting, and it gets us on a tangent. That gets us on another tangent, and then we have yeah, to go to the other bus to get to the uh, that other tangent over there. Yeah, no, we're a tangent fractal. We we just keep yeah. expanding outward. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're the center of it, Mikey. You're the heart and soul. You're the pillar of the of our of our tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Subject zero of all of this happening. Exactly. Uh, all right. Well, uh, gamer, do you have anything you'd like to say for actual thoughts that you have not said already? I'm um, sure. I suppose. I just, yeah. I just I, 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 since you're up. <laughs> I, I I know. I okay. got. Um. So the quote is: "Knowledge of SCP-902 beyond its number is to be limited to level three staff and lower." So my question there is: Doesn't the staff clearance count up? And then after checking, it says clearance for SCP personnel does count up. It doesn't count down. So it's zero for official use only, one confidential, two restricted, three secret, four top secret, and oh five. Thalmiel. Yeah. I just, I I just say that. I just realized that, that there's a re- that you know that, that's just further confirming that this thing is like wanting to be read and known. <laughs> Cause no, it's, but it, I'm saying it's worded wrong. It, it's either worded wrong. Or it's worded that way so that more pe- more lower clearance people will see this report and get infected. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, you might still be right. It might have been a goof, but it makes so much sense when you like deep dive into the into the into the core concept here. So it doesn't want the really high level personnel knowing about it. It just wants all the fodder to know. Yeah, because it's it's basically taking over like the foundation for like subtly. Um, like like you said earlier, like adding more stuff kind of would uh, like adding some of the stuff that we we've, we've suggested like to kind of expand on it would keep. It's trying to keep on the down low. What's more like keeping on the down low than like usurping basically the pawns of your chess game <laughs> from the kings and from the kings and queens. Wow. <laughs> you gotta start from the bottom before you can start a revolution, buddy. <laughs> wow. Oh god, this is basically a psychic revolu- uh, revolutionary weapon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Fuck. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was like, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, guys. We we we've had we've had a, a special like uh, like revelation here. Gamer <laughs> Yeah, gamer actually like like was brought onto my wavelength for a moment. <laughs> For this instance, it's weird. I need to change now. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like yeah, that's uh, yeah, no, that's 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 what I see. That's how I read that. It was like, oh shit! Like as you were as you were like putting that, out, I was like, no, that's not a mistake. It was intentional. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all fine here now. How are you? 
I'm just I'm just that guy from from uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, like down in the in the mail room with like that giant cork board <laughs> after I've like on like my third like caffeine like drip. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got like pictures just showing all the over cr- with, like the yeah, the just show, uh, yeah, and all the red yarn <laughs> pointing to one character. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I can move on. Okay, cool. Only 105 is allowed to know about SCP-902 at any time. So I had to question what an 05 was, because I don't remember um, reading I about that. I believe they're the directors of the Foundation. Yeah, I, I did, I did okay. find it there. Quote. Okay, cool. The 05 Council refers to the committee consisting of highest-ranking directors of the Foundation. There's more, but I guess I don't really need to read it. Yeah. So, I mean, we could we could one day like do an episode that's just like talking about the background like information about the SCP Foundation. Hell, I think I could probably actually get somebody who actually works at the SCP Foundation like website, like like does like editing and stuff and admin work for it. I could probably get a hold of them to like do an interview with them if we ever wanted to. <laughs> do it in character. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, I digress. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. No. Yeah. The O5s are supposed to be basically the head honch. Okay, it says only one of them is allowed to know about SCP-902 at one time? I kind of understand what they're... I mean, kind of understand where they're trying to go with that, where it's... They don't want everybody potentially being infected, but somebody's got to know... Like, somebody high up needs to know about this art, this item. <laughs> so, it's yeah, sort of like... Yeah, they're trying to of it. So, yeah. I guess they're aware that it's infecting people? I think I think they think they're aware of the dangers, but they have no actual clue. And I think that's the point of the entry is that like yeah. they it's like, oh yeah, no, we totally got Cthulhu in a warehouse and he's totally not like controlling us and telling us to like start up a Cthulhu call. By the way, have you heard of our Lord and Savior Cthulhu? <laughs> <laughs> like it's that kind of thing where like an eldritch entity like we think we got it in control, but because of our small ape brains, we got no fucking clue and we're actually the pawns. Yeah, totally. Like again, and that's just kind of the point of this like weird presence and unto entity. Yep. And then my last note is basically just about the ending and how I like how the ending basically shows that the, the person putting the data together is going nuts as well. Yeah. However, realistically, I feel like that part would be edited out by the SCP or at least put into an addendum about things that, that, the, that people say about this SCP. Yeah, the addendum would work. I, I also think that, like, uh, it, again, <laughs> it, it works in its favor as a, in the fiction because, like, everybody who look reads the story becomes infected. So as soon as you get to that bottom point, it's like, no, that's fine. I, I can save. <laughs> yeah, if you're already infected by that. That's true. Damn. I, I feel like that's basically, like, no, like, the story, like, for the core concept of this is pretty tight when it comes to, like, plot holes. It's like, no, that makes sense for why that would work. You know what that's, it's almost become? It's become the, uh, oh, it's in dialogue. It's fine. <laughs> that's the equivalent. <laughs> it's the way the mimetic virus infects oh uh, yeah oh there's another line <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yes yeah that's all for my notes all right uh yeah i guess we'll move on to final thoughts um so so like like we kind of we've we've been saying there's not a lot here though there is a lot of potential because of the core concept that it is the, what is here is invoking and i think that's also part of the point of this entry like in why it's so short and stuff is because it does have all the, the the groundwork there. Um, we it just we just feel like it, it's missing something because we've read all the other like more recent stuff. But this is like this is basically a good example of what the early SCP entries were, or like why people got into them is because they're basically like weird, creepy thought pieces. Um, that like once you like dig a little deeper like i think this is the, like i don't know if like you guys might you guys may agree with me or not on this but this is the first time like this is one of those instances where like um like less is more and the deeper we dive into this the less problematic like we don't there's not it's not like like the deeper you dive into this thing the more you see the, all the whole plot holes they kind of covered up the plot holes by having the concept to be the way it is yeah like yeah. it's it's actually surprisingly tight as a as a an entry in concept. It just feels like there's not a lot there because of what is not here, or because because it, it's not following. It's not like an up. It's not hasn't been upgraded to the formats that we're used to. Yeah, with all the D class guys and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But in this instance, there's no D class because the SCP Foundation itself is the D class. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 
it, it's actually kind of dark and ter- and twisted if you think about it. And again, that's kind of what some of the at least that, that my first exposure to SCP Foundation like was kind of like these kind of ideas, like this not not this story specifically, but that's what, how I kind of like was introduced to it. It's, oh, the SCP Foundation is about the this this facility this this foundation that contains these weird like fucked up like high concept weirdness objects mm-hmm. and entities. It's not as simple as kind of, just this is a monster. If he gets out, he'll bite your face off. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, or or like yeah, no, it's it's an anchor at the bottom of the ocean and here's all the crazy weird shit that happens about it. Like that's, that's, that's early SCP like kind of uh, tropes as well. However, this is the other side of like, no, this is an object. Um, it, we can't seem to do figure anything about it. However, we you need to have 50, 50 people at its base at all times. And we, there's a weird counting that's going down and everybody who reads this entry and touches the object, regardless, like they're, you're infected. Uh, you're already infected. The foundation's infected. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like that, it again, needs it, that many people specifically because yeah, when it counts, when it finishes counting down, it needs that many sacrifices for like the ritual that starts. Exactly. Yeah. Like it needs the blood ritual. Like we need fifty uh, fifty security agents there for for the blood sacrifice. Don't worry about that. No, it's not, it's not important really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like it's that kind of mentality, and I love that. Like, and again, like this sto- this entry like is a core concept that perpetuates this short entry <laughs> um so so that's why i'll i'll give it like a, a mostly I, you know I, I was gonna leave this as a partial recommendation but i feel like at this point i should call i should give it a full recommendation <laughs> but i'm not sure if that's because of the 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 info has it that's already infected me <laughs> what do you mean uh, yeah no yeah, this no, is full fine. Rec- yeah, full rec- fine here. yeah everything's fine full <laughs> recommendation um and uh yeah no, that it's it's a it's a good example of an early type of SCP entry uh, and that high concept weirdness that SCPs are known for. So yeah, that that's my recommendation. Um, so Mikey, these stands for you. There's not enough content. There is enough content. It has to be read before the countdown stops. Everything is fine. Everything is fine now. How are you? A- and uh, gamer, we're doing great work. So that was our week's episode. If you like what you heard. Or if you'd like to uh, learn more about SCP-902, you can check out um, the SCP Foundation. Uh, You can also contact us uh, about our show and let us know how we're doing uh, for SCP by going to our, uh, by by checking, by leaving comments in the comment section below where this gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr. We're all on Twitter. Uh, Mikey is at the E stands for evil. The Gamer and Yellow is at the Gamer and Yellow, but without that W, because his name is very long. For the glory of SCP-902, of course. Of course. Uh, and you can talk to me on Twitter at Review Cultist. Uh, if you'd like to send us emails, you can go to aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. We can also leave us other suggestions for creepypastas, SCPs, such as SCP 902, and uh, other spooky internet stories uh, on like Reddit No Sleep and all those other creepy nooks of the universe. Um, if you'd like to help support the show, and SCP-902, you can go to our Patreon and select the backer tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. Uh, to our patrons that are already helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay and SCP-902 safety. Uh, and we very much appreciate that. To our listeners and the creator of SCP-902, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, well, we wouldn't be spreading the word of SCP-902, and there's there's no better work than that. And to the creator of SCP-902, God bless you. Until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I am Mikey, the E stands for evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And this has been Aldente Rigamortis, sponsored by SCP-902. Sleep well.